Hi guys, I am back today with another easy DIY project for you. This is the easiest way to make a wood picture frame that looks like a store-bought picture frame, but it does not require any fancy tools. You don't need a router. You don't need to do any table saw tricks that you might be intimidated by. This is just two pieces of molding and your miter saw. If you wanna make the glue up a little bit faster, Brad Nailer 2, let me show you how I did it. So for this picture frame, I'm using two and an eighth inch pine unfinished molding that I get at Lowe's. So this is a chair rail, chair rail molding. It's pretty common and it's on the website, so I'm assuming that they sell it at most of the stores nationwide. But any chair rail molding is going to do a pretty good job. Just pick a style that you like and get the wider version. Some of them are only about an inch wide. So go for the wider version so that you can get a chunky look to your picture frame. Once you decide what size picture frame you're gonna need for your art, you need to make all of your cuts with a 45 degree angle on your miter saw. I usually try to hold the opposite end pieces together to make sure that I have them exactly the same size. That way I don't have any problems trying to glue up a perfect rectangle. If the opposite sides are exactly the same size, size then you are gonna have a nice rectangle and you're not gonna have to worry about your angles being off. After getting all four sides with the chair rail molding cut for this picture frame, I needed to add a little bit of a sanded down edge to the back of all four pieces of the chair rail molding. So I'm just using my power sander to sort of knock down that hard edge along the back. This is sort of rounding that hard edge off and I'm gonna do the same thing to the one by one molding I'm gonna to attach to the back. So where those two pieces of molding meet, I have the knockdown edges on the both pieces of molding there so that it creates a nice line between the two pieces of molding when I attach them to each other. I'll give you a close up look at that line in a minute, but first let me tell you the next step. So this is the glue up process. I am using wood glue just like, just like I would with any other woodworking project. I'm applying the wood glue to the one by one and I haven't actually even cut the one by one with a 45 yet. So I just cut it a little bit extra long um, so that I could attach it to the, to the chair rail molding without worrying about whether or not my 45 is lined up. I'll cut the 45 into that one by one molding in just a second. So I'm at, using my brad nailer to hold that one by one firmly in place while the glue dries. If you don't have a brad nailer or a pin nailer, you could clamp this. Just make sure you get it lined up as perfect as possible. Um, but if you do have a brad nailer or a pin nailer, it's a lot better and makes you, it lets you move on to the next step a lot faster. Okay, after attaching that one by one, I went back to my miter saw and cut the 45s onto those one by one pieces of molding that are now attached. So I used the, the 45 that was already on the top piece of the molding as a guide for my blade and just carefully cut those one by one so that everything was perfectly lined up and square. Now that I have all four sides ready for this picture frame, I am ready to glue it up. So I am using my wood glue again. I apply a nice thick amount onto each end of one of the sides. I have scrap pieces of one by underneath the chair rail part of the molding so that I can hold it up high and in place and line everything up perfectly. Then I use my brad nailer to get um, hold the corner or hold those pieces together while the wood glue dries. So I'm shooting in brad nails from both sides just for a stronger, tighter bond. Again, if you don't have a brad nailer, you could use something like a strap clamp to hold your pieces together while the wood glue dries. So here I'm using a nail set to set a couple of the brad nails that didn't go in all the way. This is a couple of hours later, so this is after the wood glue on my frame has completely dried and I'm being really careful to not accidentally separate those corners. Then I use wood filler. So I'm painting this frame. I'm not gonna have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna get a perfect sand, or I mean a perfect stain. So if you wanna stain your project, just be sure to pick a wood filler or use wood putty later, whatever your normal routine is, you can do that with this project too. After letting all of that wood filler dry, I was ready to move on to sandpaper. So just on the corners where the molding pieces meet at that 45, I used 100 grit sandpaper just to get it, the pieces looking nice and perfect. And I even put it in between the two pieces of molding 
anywhere that wood filler might have accidentally settled in. Then I moved on to 150 grit sandpaper. So again, if you're staining, you might need to sand to a higher grit. I didn't even really sand my whole project because I am painting. I just paid attention to anywhere that I used wood filler really. Okay, and here is a little trick I like to do on pine furniture. So Danish oil soaks into wood and hardens a bit. So it makes that wood a little bit more durable and resistant to dents. And we know that pine is pretty easy to dent, right? So I like to apply Danish oil, even if I'm gonna paint, to any, pro any of my projects that I do with pine, generally poplar too, just because it's a little bit softer compared to some of the other hardwoods. So you don't have to do this step, obviously, but that's a little tip. Danish oil will slightly harden your pine projects and make them a little bit more durable. Just be sure to let it dry completely and wipe away any excess before you paint. So for this wood picture frame, I decided to go with a dark gray chalk paint. I like chalk paint because it dries super fast. After that chalk paint was dried, I did two coats of that. After that chalk paint was dried, I did a dark wax over top of it just because I wanted that dark wax to settle into all of those curves and edges and bring out all of the detail in this picture frame. Again, all of this is optional, but I will have a step-by-step -step of painting this frame coming out soon, so stay tuned if you're really interested in getting the same look. Okay guys, that is how I make a wood picture frame with just two pieces of molding. It's pretty easy. This is my go-to way to make picture frames from now on. It will work with canvases because it's got that extra depth in the back, and you can put a piece of glass between um, the picture frame and the art too. I have a video for how I made this paper wall art. I'll put a link to that above and in the description below if you wanna check that out. If you're wondering how I attached my art to the picture frame, I use those great command strips. So it's those strips that are sticker on one side and Velcro on the other. So I attached the art to the picture frame with those command strips and I attached the picture frame to the wall with another set of command strips. So just make sure you pick the right size command strip. It can actually hold a lot of weight. I have a lot of my wall art hanging up in this house with those command strips. They're fantastic. I'll put a link to those in the description below too. But that's it guys for this project. Let me know what you think in the comments below and have a great day.